All right, so welcome to Math 112. This class is going to primarily be focused on trig functions. And as you'll see, we'll kind of define these trig functions on a circle. So before we can even really get started, we have to do a little bit of preliminary work just understanding some facts about a circle. And it'll turn out that circles are very closely related to the idea of distance. So in order to derive all the information we need about a circle, we'll start this section by talking about distance. So distance will take us to circles. Circles will take us into trig functions. Trig functions will be the class. There's the short version. So distance, what am I talking about? Well, distance in one dimension is super easy. It's stuff you've been doing your whole life. Like if I give you a number line and I ask you how far is it from, I don't know, two to six, I'm guessing anybody watching this video can immediately tell me that the answer is four. How you get there, I don't know. Maybe you count on your fingers, maybe you measure, maybe you do some sort of subtraction idea, or maybe you just know the answer. For our sake, once we get into harder applications, it'll be useful to take advantage of this subtraction idea. So can we all agree that one of the many reasons that the distance from this dot at 2 to this dot at 6 is 4 is because 6 minus 2 equals 4? Yeah, good. Okay, moving on. Let's make the problem a little bit harder, a little bit more appropriate for a college class. What if we're not limited to just one dimension? So instead of a number line, we start out with this coordinate plane. And I move this dot, I don't know, down here. And then I ask you the same question. What's the distance between these two points? Well, all of a sudden, things are a lot more difficult. But fortunately, with the right perspective, the answer is not that hard to find. That perspective dates at least all the way back to 500 BC, when the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras lived. And this guy, who may or may not really deserve credit for this idea, and may or may not really look like this stock image that I pulled of some ancient figure, taught us that in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two legs of the triangle is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Put much more simply, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And maybe you're like, wait, what? What triangle? I thought we were talking about a straight line. And that's where you need this perspective. You have to imagine this triangle. Since the legs of this triangle are horizontal and vertical respectively, it's easy to figure out their length. That's the problem we started this video with. We get length in one dimension just by subtracting. So the legs of this triangle have length 3 and 4. In our formula, a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 4, so now it's super easy to figure out what c is equal to. Since c squared is 25, c could either be positive 5 or negative 5, but since we're talking about distance, only the positive answer makes sense. What I'm saying is that c, the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle we kind of imagined, which is also the length of the line connecting the two dots, and therefore the answer to our question, is just equal to 5. And if you really like formulas, we can generalize this result. Imagine any two points in coordinate space. To figure out how far apart they are, all we have to do is imagine the triangle whose legs are the vertical and horizontal distance between the points respectively. With that perspective, the distance between the points is just the hypotenuse of this triangle. In other words, C in the famous Pythagorean theorem. How do you get C? Well, first figure out A and B, square them, sum them, and take their square root. Doing so produces this kind of messy jumble of symbols that often students are told to just memorize is the distance formula. And sure, you can do that if you want. I mean, it works. Test it on the example we started with. But the problem is it's really easy to mess this formula up, especially once you start to learn other formulas that look kind of sort of similar. But if you can remember that this formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem, which I bet you had memorized before you saw this video, with a little bit of substitution and rearrangement, then asking you to memorize it isn't a big deal. Whatever, it's up to you. The point of this video was just to introduce the distance formula, give it some context so that you don't forget it if you ever need it later, and convince you that you can use it to find the distance between any two points in coordinate space. If you got all that, you're good.